Hello Youtubers, welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for the comments and the kindness of the appreciation to, to my videos. Thank you very much. Today we're gonna try to touch up a diamond, a real diamond. So a hardness 10 on a mod scale, the hardest stone on earth. Uh, we're just gonna try to touch up the, some damages to it uh, uh, using a facetron, a standard facetron, uh, but some with some little, uh, let's say, tricks. So remain with me throughout the procedure. I'm gonna see if it's possible to touch up a diamond with a facetron. Okay, this is the stone. I can't magnify it more with the camera, but I'll show you some pictures of where the problem resides. Maybe you can see there is a slight chip on the gold eh? this side. Let me show you some close-up pictures to see what is the problem with the stone. Okay, first of all, we're gonna put the stone, the diamond inside of uh, absolute acetone in a way that uh, cleans up nicely all the grease and any residue from any any sort of residue okay and we dry it up and we do the same with the selected dot so that um, the glue will have a perfect key perfect grip into both materials. I'm not going to use wax on this case. In this case, we're going to use high strength uh, super glue, cyanoacrylate, because the diamond, when you work diamond, it tends to heat up very much and transfer the heat very quickly. And out of experience, the, the wax will just melt away and the stone will pop out. So, as you can see, I had to change the dot. Because the V1, which was supposed to be in, I mean, indicated for this kind of job, is just too big. And grinding on the girdle, I will probably grind also the, the V dot. So I had to change to this uh, uh, conical one. Uh, and I'm ready actually to put the glue inside. I'm using for this job a super glue. So now I collate and I will actually reinforce it with, uh, with some filling, reinforcing black for bumpers, grills, fairings, radiators and many more things. And we're going to try to see if the many more things include diamonds too. Alright, so see you as I, uh, as I top the stone. Okay, I put a bit of glue already. I'll suggest you to put a little bit of WD-40 on this surface here, on the big top. Uh, you can use any other lubricant with just a little dab. It doesn't have to be wet, it has to be just to be lubricated in a way that if you have a mistake, if you make a mistake with the application of the glue, it actually doesn't glue into the main, the main top here. Otherwise you have to start again everything. It happened to me many times and it's annoying. So yeah, you see? Now it's held in this side and there is no way that it could stick to the other one because there is grease. Make sure that the grease doesn't spread around the stone or else you're gonna compromise the bond between this dop and the stone. All right, let's reinforce it now. I use a piece of paper underneath because I like to recycle the dust that enforcing dust. So what I basically do is I wet the top between the diamond like that. Maybe a bit too much, but okay. Then sprinkle on the filler. You don't have the filler, but you do have a very strong um, cyanoacrylate. You can use bicarbonate of soda, of sodium, sodium bicarbonate. 
that uh, act like a, like a filler. drop of glue so that all the crevices get filled up and we got it so if you did a good job it should hold the stone in position while you are cutting it you know it's not only for diamonds this procedure you can use it for any other stone I don't really like uh, doping with a uh, super glue but for in this case for diamonds except for big components which is which takes much longer time to dry i use this uh, method okay so let's see the way we cut it for this job we're going to use a, a 400 sintered diamond sintered, sintered lap yeah and water to protect not to protect the diamond because the diamond can stand heat. It is to protect the glue and also the lap. You will feel drag. When the diamond get, got cut, you will feel the drag. And if in one direction you don't feel the drag, you gotta change direction. Yeah. I could feel it now. and just a bit more you can hear the raping going down as the diamond bites in in that moment it means the diamond is getting worn out together with the top here <laughs> But yeah, let me show you the pictures of what's going on. So as you can see, we we actually reduced the crack. As you can see here, I don't know if you we reduced the crack, but at the same time <laughs> start grinding also the top to compensate uh, the, the change of the shape also from this side see now at the same time a customer asked me to cut off the corners a little bit and this is what we're going to do okay so let's start There is the corner. Alright, let's do it on all four parts. To be honest, <laughs> I have to show you. Unfortunately the glue decided to, to give out, to give up on the on the stone. So that you also you don't get desperate because believe me, it's not only you. It doesn't happen only to you. It happens often and not only with the diamonds. Sometimes it pops out. Okay, so what we do now is we don't fret. We put the drop of glue there and we dop it again. Yeah, every time we have to adjust because there are always slight, slightly tiny little uh, movements of the stone when you, when you put it back. But, uh, you know, eventually we'll finish it without much problems. So, let's resume. So I resumed with the cutting and I did the four corners. I'll show you now. Wait, I'll show you better. Did the four corners. 
corners as required by the customer. And I reduced the chip on the gold day because in any case the setting is going to be a, um, a tube setting. So you're not going to see much of a diamond on the gold day. So what we're going to do now is just we compensate the girdle we gain fixing up one corner. Uh, where is it here? We compensate, you see that girdle. Technically saying we baryonize the crown in this part. So we, look, we make a facet here and we thin it up, we thin up the, the girdle. In a way it's going to be easier to set and it's going to look better. And that's easy, we're going to make a facet like, we're going to put a facet at 60 degrees or 65 degrees just to recover this little, little girdle here, excess. And that's it. Probably 65 degrees is going to be fine. We set the machine at 65 degrees, we put it around the towards the center of the lap, more or less. We start water. Just a little bit of stilling to, to protect the glue. And then we make the facet. As I said before, you should feel the, the dragging of the stone in one direction on the left, yeah, like here. You feel the resistance and that's the time in that moment, in that spot, in that inclination, the diamond gets worn out. Otherwise it just floats around and it doesn't, nothing happen to it. So I come back to you when I finish the facet. So while cutting it, I was observing that only a facet, compared to the rest of the style of a stone, only a facet on that corner would be not really um, the best, the best solution, you know. Even though, as I said, it would be it would be set in a tube setting. And still, for myself, it doesn't really look nice. Only one facet. So I cross it up and I make uh, another two facets at 50 degrees, like scissors. And I show you now the pictures. We do a pre-polishing, a quick pre-polishing with uh, a right deck. This is an old one, that's why market has scratched uh, because it scratches any other stone but it's still good for the diamonds. Um, yeah, so we go with this one as a pre-polish. This is a one, uh, this is a 600 which is corresponding to a 1200 uh, and then we're ready for the polishing. I set the machine at maximum speed and we, we pre-polish. Okay, now for the polishing we're going to use a cast iron lap I had made. As you can see, I'm not cutting or touching up diamonds since a long time. <laughs> so there is quite a bit of uh, oxidization, this is rust. Um, it wasn't bother, it won't bother the cutting, but I just like to work on, on a clean lap. So what we're going to do? What am I going to do is I take um, a sponge. I'm going to use a scoring side of a you know household sponge to remove this oxidization, this rust. So you can't really contaminate this kind of laps with any grit because diamond is, is harder than any other thing you can put uh, on it. But I'll use just a scoring sponge. And hopefully I'm not going to spoil the surface flatness. Okay. Finish with the sponge. I hope my wife is not going to complain too much <laughs> because I just grabbed it from the kitchen. I'm just going to 
rinse and let it dry a little bit. Okay, there's still a bit of rust in it, but that's fine. And now it's ready for, for the lubricant. I'm just going to put, this is a WD-40, but you can use any other lubricant. You want the lubricant to penetrate the, the little tiny uh, porosity of the material here. And you load it with 50,000 grit diamond powder. Just as you would for a ceramic lab. So it's ready now, and we're gonna polish the surfaces we just made. So 50 degrees, uh, index is 1 and 95, because then the 1 and 65 degrees is gonna be 96. Okay, I'll show you, well, let me show you first the way it sounds. <laughs> Yeah, you have to be careful not to overheat the stone, otherwise the the glue will give up again. Okay. For the polishing we set maximum speed, not really, like almost maximum speed. A bit of water dripping. Like this, okay. And you put always your pinky or your finger to check the temperature of the of the diamond. You don't want it overheat, otherwise the, the glue is going to burn out and it's, the stone is going to pop up. So when you feel the stone is heating up a little bit too much, you ease up the pressure and you check it with the lens. I'm almost done, I'm going to show it to you when it is finished. Okay, I'm done. Now I'll separate the stone from the dot and I'll show you the final exam. for watching I hope that you enjoyed if you did like subscribe and stay tuned for the next video God bless you and bye bye